the sun is just starting to climb up over the treetops. And it's gonna be a beautiful day, that's plain to see. Welcome to Bill Dance Outdoors, America's most popular and longest running TV fishing show. Now I've gone fishing with Bill Dance today. Now here's a bite concerning line size. Many avid crankbait fishermen will tell you that you can reach maximum depth when using small line sizes and especially if you're using a long enough rod and make a long enough cast. Depth is dictated by line size, but not in regards to pound test. The larger the diameter, the more depth robbing friction is created as the line is pulled through the water. Disregard the manufacturer's line strength claim and consider the actual diameter of the line. Be sure the drag is set properly and the hook on the crankbaits are extremely sharp. Sure, you're going to miss some fish, but look at how many you'll miss by not getting your lure down to their depth level. Yes, sir. In that rascal pool. You got the whole thing in his mouth. <laughs> yes, sir. Oh, boy. Get that pretty thing. All right, come here. Say, ah, uh, that old oh, boy. You got it way down in there. Yeah, he did. That big old mouth, that little old bait. Look at that, he swallowed it. That little bitty bait in that big old fish's mouth. All right, Bubba. Big old stomach, too. He's been feeding. All right, let's go home. Boom! Like that. Okay. You know, there's absolutely no telling how many bass are caught every year on crankbaits, and with good reason. They're the type of bait that you can quickly cover lots of water with at different depths. And their profile, shape, and action closely resembles forage that bass feed on, like bluegill, for instance. This particular model we're using duplicates a bluegill, and the size is just almost perfect. The size is just easy to swallow for a say a pound and a half uh, bass up to six or seven pound bass. You know, crankbaits have some important characteristics and what I want to do for the next few minutes is discuss some of them with you. Many anglers believe that all you got to do is tie one on, cast it out, and reel it back. Well, that's true to a degree, but there's a lot more to it than just that. What are we going to do here? Got you. Watch it, old boy. Okay, here's a buzzword. But it's a mighty big word when you're talking about monofilament fishing line. When it comes to fishing line, what does the word break strength mean? Well, actually, break strength is just what it indicates. Like 14 pound test, for instance, is supposed to break at 14 pounds of constant tension or thereabouts. Say so premium lines test close to the listed strength. And that will be the most consistent throughout the line. All the way from where you've got it tied, all the way through the line. Now cheaper grade bonofilament lines may claim higher test ratings, but their actual break strength may vary throughout the length of the line. Now some sections may be stronger or weaker than the break strength listed on the label. Now this is why it's so doggone important to use 
a premium grade line. It's the most important connection between you and the fish. And that's why you see fishermen, they'll make a cast and they're fighting a fish, and all of a sudden, boom, their line breaks uh, 20 feet off the tip because the line is not consistent. So that's why, again, I say you want to use a premium grade line. It is the most important connection between you and the fish. going buddy there we go Woo. it's a nice one Woo. yes you are bye bye can line size have an effect on the speed of your lure you know, 10-pound test, 12-pound test, 14-pound test, 17-pound test. Certainly it can. Depending on what pound test you're using can have a major effect. Example, let's say uh, your spool is filled with 8 to 10-pound test. The size of your spool or your retrieve speed won't change that much during the cast. But let's say you're fishing 20-pound test or heavier. This line will naturally have a much larger diameter, so the spool size may be reduced in half on a long cast. Therefore, the retrieve speed increases as you crank or work the lure in. Now, when you really think about lure speed, it's about the only real control a fisherman has in making fish like the bass strike. When a lure is worked by a bass at the correct speed, the fish strikes out of a reflex action. The predatory instinct of a fish takes charge and the bass simply reacts. Hopefully the result is a hooked fish, but the speed of your offering must be exactly right to create this instinctive bass response. Now some days, like I said earlier, it's fast, other days it's slow, and at other times it's practically no action or speed at all. You just got to psych yourself into experimenting. That's what you got to do. So I got a lot of grass right there around four feet. What I'm trying to do is kind of keep it right up on the edge of it, pulling the boat back up on until about four and just firing right down the edge of those grass lines. Four, four and a half feet. And it kind of drops off a little bit deeper goes off to about five right over here. That's the edge of it right there. Action is another important element. Action relates to two different areas. First, action means the motion the bait has, the wiggle or wobble. And the second action is what the fisherman does, how he or she works a lure on the retrieve. Keep in mind that a straight, steady retrieve only catches a small percentage of fish. What you do to provide an erratic action to the lure can make a big difference in the number of bass you'll catch. This along with the different levels of sound it creates drives bass crazy. Tough rascal there. And one tough dude. There we go. Let's see. That one just fell out. There we go. That thing. See you around, dude. Another characteristic is buoyancy. Buoyancy determines whether the bait floats, positive buoyancy, sinks, negative buoyancy, or suspends neutral buoyancy. Crankbaits can be fished near the surface, on the bottom, or in between. 
but it's important that the angler be attuned to buoyancy to know which bait to use for certain conditions. Boom. There we go. Wow. Say ah uh, for me. You know how to go ah. Uh. Woo, got it way down there too. Hit it way back in there. Little bait. Another characteristic that fishermen give the most consideration to when selecting a crankbait is color. There's no color that won't catch a fish at times, but some colors seem to produce better than others, and that has a lot to do with the type of forage that bass are feeding on. Example, when fishing an area where bass are feeding on crawfish, use crawfish colored patterns. If it's shad, use shad patterns, and the same applies for bluegill. 